Hello everybody and welcome to this new video. <laughs> Alright, I said I would make this a series and I think I kind of did it right now. <laughs> because I'm now recording the second video, which makes this an official series. Unbelievable, I know. Okay, last episode I talked about how, or like kind of what label I use for my sexuality. Today we're gonna talk about what I use as a kind of romantic label. Because yes, sexual and romantic attraction can be something hella different. <laughs> so I think you can divide attraction to kind of like four parts in general. It can be divided in so much more, but let's just divide it in four to make this easier. So on one hand, we have romantic attraction, which is who you love in a romantic sense, like your romantic partner. It's like this butterfly feeling, the typical feeling when you describe love. That's what we think of first, like romantic attraction, someone you want to be together with. Then we have sexual attraction, which is what you like in a horny way. <laughs> the person you could see yourself have sex with, you know? And um, yeah, that's kind of it. Like someone who turns you on and stuff. That's sexual attraction. Then we kind of have sensual attraction, which, which means you desire to have bodily contact with the person. It doesn't have to be that you like them in a romantic or sexual way, especially not in a sexual way. You could just like have an attraction to them in a way that you're like, they seem so cuddly. I want to cuddle them or I want to touch them in that kind of way. It doesn't have to be sexual, as I stated. And then there is like platonic attraction that could be um, in a way that this person, you, you just, you like this person in a friend way and it's, or like in a family way, that could also be it. Like, I like my friends really, like, a lot. But I wouldn't say I'm romantically interested in them. I am platonically interested in them. There's also the thing of, like, platonic life partners, which is, like, these pe people have a platonic um, attraction, attraction to each other. Maybe also a sensual attraction, something like that. But they do not have romantic attractions to one another, but they still want to spend their lives together because they love each other platonically. All right, I think that's a good kind of explanation <laughs> to the whole attraction thing. So I can go on with um, my label <laughs> or the label I kind of chose. So if you have some knowledge about how certain labels work in the whole LGBTQ community, um, you will know that there are certain umbrella terms. And if you didn't know, you know now. <laughs> so, uh, umbrella term means that there's a term that really just uh, is an umbrella for many different terms in this umbrella. So, if we have something like non-binary, there are many, many ways non-binary is. It's like there could be gender fluid, agender, whatever. I won't really go into detail what these labels mean. I just wanted to give them as an example. Maybe you can look them up and learn something if you don't know what they mean. <laughs> the label I would describe myself as is aromantic. A means an absence of something, so it would mean an absence of romantic attraction, but <laughs> aromantic is an umbrella term. To kind of summarize it, aromantic means that the person that labels themselves as this <laughs> does not experience romantic attraction. That's the definition for this term, but as I stated, it's an umbrella term. So that means that under this umbrella there are different kinds of aromantic or aromanticism. It doesn't mean that every person that says they are aromantic experiences no romantic attraction at all. For me that's also true. I do experience romantic attraction, but it really takes its time 
and it's really really rare so if i actually am romantically interested in someone that happens like after two to three years of knowing them and <laughs> kind of that's like the way i experienced it till now um and uh it's really strong then actually the romantic attraction but uh it doesn't happen that often as i stated so it could be that i go into a relationship and i tell my partner hey i am right now i'm not feeling romantic feelings for you but i like you a lot and i like you a lot in a platonic way and i like you in a sensual way and in a sexual way but i just don't experience a romantic attraction to you and if that's fine with you we can still keep this relationship going and maybe i will develop romantic attraction but i can't really like give you a 100% chance on that happening so i can't promise you that <laughs> and yeah <laughs> Now, some people may say this is something that's not healthy, but I have learned to accept myself and my feelings for what they are. Because otherwise, I will just keep on hurting other people in kind of being like, oh yeah, I, I love you. And then I get really anxious because I actually don't love them. I, I, I don't have that, but I like them a lot and I want to be in a relationship with them um, because it's enough for me to feel the, these other feelings of really liking the person or loving them platonically and loving them sexually and sensually, you know? But um, yeah, as many people in the ROA spectrum <laughs> feel, um, it sometimes feels like it's unhealthy and not normal to feel this way, but I can tell you it is. It really is. It's it's not it's not an illness to feel this way. It's okay. It's feelings. Feelings can't be wrong <laughs> and they can't be right. They are feelings. That's the whole thing with them. They are just feelings. <laughs> they are not rational and so you can't rationalize why I don't feel that way. <laughs> Oh, don't feel that way that often in brackets <laughs> so yeah if you have the feeling like it really takes some time for you to fall in love it could also be because of anxiety or because of trauma or because of trust issues or because of whatever it could still mean that there is something that's kind of standing in your way of feeling these feelings or letting these feelings happen but it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you just because you don't experience these things it's fine it's fine it's re it really is you don't owe anyone anything and you don't owe anyone any feeling so just be honest with yourself and with your potential partner slash partners because if you aren't, that just sucks, okay? <laughs> it sucks for everyone. Because you will have the feeling like, why do I not feel this way? You will feel the pressure and the other person will feel like they did something wrong, probably. Or like that there is something wrong, that something happened or whatever. Be honest to yourself, be honest to your partners, partner, whatever. And um, yeah, don't judge yourself for your feelings. All right? And don't let anyone else judge you for your feelings. All right? Okay. Yeah. If you have questions, just ask them. I'm a good teacher. I will answer them. Bye. <laughs> what the fuck am I doing? It's like this butterfly feeling. The typical feeling when you describe love.